Hi there, this is Jian Jian from Spokane Public Library again, and welcome back to Ask an Emergency Preparedness Expert. In this episode, our expert talks about fuel, whether it is for lighting or warmth. These are very important subjects, so be sure you watch all the way to the end. Okay, today we're going to be talking about heating our homes uh, without power and without natural gas, without services coming into our box that we live in. How do we stay warm in our box? <clears throat> Ideally, if you've got a wood stove, that makes things really simple. Uh, and uh, uh, I have, this is my little wood stove that I've kept. I'm a, like one of the few in the neighborhood that has a wood stove. But I love my wood stove and it does take some work getting the wood and splitting the wood and storing the wood and bringing the wood in and cleaning up afterwards. More commonly, older homes have fireplaces and you can get an insert wood stove and if you choose to do this, very important, you have a shelf that you can boil water on, you can cook on. So it's not just heat, it is your survival stove. Uh, very important that you do that. Here's uh, a former student of mine on the South Hill here in Spokane that had an old home and boy, he put in this low pie. He loves it. Great heat and he can... Uh, boil up his coffee and, and uh, all kinds of options with that. This is nature's fuel. Uh, every year, jillions of tons of wood is manufactured out there in the forest by the sun. And, uh, and trees die and they fall and we use it. And that's how mankind heated for thousands of years. Man used the natural fuel in the forest. And so having a stock of this is uh, very wise. Now, this is not an option for many of you. And uh, your place is small, you don't have a fireplace, maybe you don't have the money to put in uh, a wood stove. So here is one option that's been used for many years, and that's the kerosene heaters. Uh, they put out a lot of heat. Uh, they're excellent. Uh, and some of you that may have used these, you know, you don't start these in your house. You start them out on the patio, or outside on the porch, and you get these lit and going where it's really hot. Then you bring them in. That eliminates uh, odor and smoke and initially getting these things started. But uh, this is a great option. Uh, they can throw out, you know, uh, uh, thousands of BTUs and heat a, a room area very adequately, even when it's cold. <clears throat> now, having fuel. Uh, if, you've got, if you've got the heater and you have no fuel, uh, that, uh, uh, that does happen. Uh, believe it or not, people will uh, get these emergency uh, items and not have the batteries for them or not have the fuel. You want minimum 25 gallons of fuel. And I would say that would be minimum. So you can go several months without heat uh, or, or without services providing heat to be able to keep your, your home warm. Now, the next option is the propane heaters. Uh, propane is uh, clean burning. The fuel lasts uh, almost indefinitely in a sense. We'll talk about that. Uh, and uh, there are several options uh, of propane type heaters, and this is just one common one you can buy uh, all over Spokane. Uh, many of the stores in the wintertime will sell these uh, Mr. Heater uh, propane uh, type heaters. If you're going to burn these inside, get the hose that is a low pressure hose that goes to your propane tank. So you bring your propane tank in, you have the low pressure hose, these heaters are made for indoors and they will actually shut off if it becomes dangerous boom they automatically quit and I've had that happen uh, in a TV one time um, so here's one set up and it's ready to go now not as many BTUs as your <clears throat> kerosene heaters uh, this would be a smaller room that you're you're keeping warm uh, and such but uh, they work real well now this is a little outdoor heater 
that uh, some people uh, purchase for maybe a part of their house where they're not living, but in extreme cold, they're going to keep their plumbing warm uh, back in a corner or a bathroom or a laundry room or whatever. And uh, uh, that also is a heating option that you may want to consider. So propane fuel lasts indefinitely. Propane itself, just three little carbons with some hydrogen on it, uh, uh, it, it will last forever. Now, containers may not last forever. So if you purchase a new container, fill it with propane, and keep it in your house. And I talked to the fire marshal, and he said it's perfectly okay to have uh, propane sealed containers inside your home. Uh, that's not against the, uh, the law. Uh, so uh, you can, can have these stored down in your basement, and uh, they will last for 100 years. Uh, now, if they're out in the weather and they're going to rust and things, that could be a problem. But propane lasts, and so it's a good fuel. You can also get these smaller <clears throat> little one-pound uh, propane uh, containers. Now, if there's any kind of an emergency, this stuff disappears. You want to store fuel. You want to have fuel for at least three months uh, in your home. My wood stove, I have at least going into winter, at least uh, three quarts. I have more than that, but at least three quarts. Uh, if, if, if I have uh, a, a kerosene heater, I, I want to have that kerosene. I want to have propane. I want to have uh, this available, so I do not worry about finding it. <clears throat> now, in review, we're looking at wood stove fireplace insert. That's the best. Not an option for a lot of people, so we want a standalone kerosene heater or we want a propane heater or we may want a combination of both. If you have a large home, you may want a couple, three of these and then have plenty of fuel, you know, to, to go with that and at least three months of fuel. We've got a website that you can go to and uh, get more information. And so thank you very much.